Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. I see everyone trickling in. We're going to give everyone a few more minutes. Um, we want to make sure that we start promptly at seven. So we're just going to wait another maybe two or three minutes because we want to make sure that everyone has enough time to get the information that they need. And we want to give a solid time for Q&A at the end. So as you're coming in, just answer the poll. Um, and just kind of take some time to get acclimated. We are getting ourselves ready for a great conversation. So we'll be waiting just another two or three minutes. I see fam, you trying to dominate the poll. That's okay. FSU, we in here. We coming on, we in here. <laughs> Miss Michelle trying to start something. Saw her put them, bring them vipers out. <laughs> oh, I got my wrong mug. I should have, should have got my FSU mug for tonight. That's all right. I got love for you. <laughs> I even got on the, look, I got on the wrong colors. So we'll say the right colors tonight. <laughs> we'll say the right, we'll say the right colors tonight. <laughs> there you go, DJ. Thanks everyone for being here. As I said before, we're gonna give it just a couple more minutes. We'll start right at around 7.02. Um, go ahead and come in, take the poll, get a little bit acclimated. Um, we wanna just give everyone a few minutes to come in, but we wanna make sure we start it at a reasonable time so that we can have ample time for Q&A. Damn, fam, you is really dominating the poll right now. Y'all gonna make me in the poll just on GP. <laughs> we can make you an honorary rattler. How about that? You know, I I was in Tallahassee 15 years. I feel like it's all in there. A little garnet, a little gold, a little orange or green. <laughs> I'm trying to get five more to say FSU. Can I just get? <laughs> Fam, you taking over the chat too. What's going on out here in these streets? All right, everyone, I am going to go ahead and in I see TCP can they slid in and we have someone from other um, you can just put in the chat which school you're representing. But um, I want to thank all of you for being here. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and introduce myself. All right, so I'm Tajana Mallory. I am the Florida State Director for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. Um, we are an organization, an in, now international organization that fights for equity within the cannabis industry. That's equity on the patient side, equity on in education. We want um, we want it to be equal ground when it comes to access for patients, education, and on the business side. Um, there are plenty of people making money in this industry, and we would like to see that more diversified as well. So if you don't know anything about m for mm um, I am happy to tell you about all the programming, all the things that we have to do. I'll make sure that my contact information is in the chat for you all at the end so that um, we can continue to network and build and, and grow an amazing industry together. Um, so I'm going to be a high level moderator. I'm gonna run your Q and A at the end. I am going to kick it off to the amazing DJ, who is going to moderate your panel today. Um, one of our biggest goals for this is that all of the students in the Tallahassee area um, will really start to learn and be educated about using plants as medicine, all the things that you should and should not be doing and how to navigate some of the nuances on your college campuses. So DJ is uh, M4MM's National HBCU Director. 
He is also our national director for our safe access program, which if you are here today in this student orientation, you already are um, taking the first step in getting educated in preparation for one of our safe access card clinics coming up. DJ is gonna tell you more about that as well. Um, but this is a great step for you to start to get educated prior to getting your card and really understand the benefits of having a card. Um, and we'll talk more about that as well. So again, I'm Tajana Mallory, your Florida State Director for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. We also do encourage students to join. We do have a freemium membership which means you can get some of the benefits of m for mm um, at no cost, but you can still get that education that we offer. You um, can get on our newsletter list to learn more about various workshops uh, and educational opportunities that we have. If you are interested in learning more about the plant in and of itself, as well as um, the business aspects and all the different ways you can get involved in this industry. So I'm going to kick it over to you, DJ, and I want to thank all of you attendees for being here. Thank you so much, Tajana. I appreciate the great intro. Uh, as she mentioned, my name is DJ Howard. I am the director of HBCU Outreach for Minorities for Medical Marijuana and for our safe access clinics nationally. Uh, we do a lot of work here in Florida with our safe access clinics, and it's kind of where the whole program originated. Brian and I'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that whatever support um, for, from a student standpoint that you all need, that you have that. And so um, our guests that we have here that I'm about to introduce are here to help make sure that you do have those resources. Uh, I'm obviously here as well. I'll drop my information in the chat. Uh, also, I just want to say this is a safe space. The meeting is being recorded, but it's not going to leave the confines of M for MM. Uh, we may take a couple of good snippets and just uh, use them to promote the event after after this call. Um, but this is a safe space really for y'all to ask any questions that you might have. Um, definitely we want you to feel comfortable about being able to ask any questions just about your campus. Um, just generally, we'll try to cover some frequently asked questions. Um, but if anything comes up during the conversation, please drop it in the chat. As Tajana mentioned, she's going to be helping us out with the moderating and making sure that we are able to kind of address all of those questions before this call is over. Um, so without further ado, I'd love to introduce Ms. Michelle Wilson, Coordinator of Community Education and Outreach for, oh, I'm sorry, Community uh, Engagement Education and Outreach for uh, Mary at FAMU. Um, she does a lot of work with Tajana, with myself. Uh, we've kind of been working together on different things. Uh, and Brian as well, since we uh, met at the 420 event last year at FAMU's campus uh, and, and had a great time. Also looking forward to 420 this year. Um, but definitely want to introduce uh, Ms. Michelle Wilson. Uh, you want to say a little, little something? Say hi, Michelle. Oh, absolutely. I'm not going to turn down an opportunity to say something because Come on, talk to me I'm representing FAMU tonight, and we have the majority in the chat and I think in the participants. So, of course, I'm going to say something about Florida Agricultural and Mechanical, no, the Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University's Medical Marijuana Education and Research Initiative. I don't know how many students or uh, individuals that are, are participating tonight uh, know that there is a medical marijuana program on campus. We have a legislative mandate and our mandate is to educate minorities about using medical marijuana, but also the unlawful side. So we're gonna help you navigate the medical marijuana laws in Florida with our partners. We have partners throughout the state of Florida. And like DJ said, uh, we're already partnering with m for mm a wonderful, great, fantastic organization. So I know you're in good hands and you're gonna get a lot of information tonight. So get your questions ready and we look forward to the engagement. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, thank you. We'll get into some of the things Mary has going on this semester. Um, we'll probably drop some stuff in the event, right? Probably right, Miss Wilson, so that we can make sure that we get you all uh, kind of updated and up to speed on what Mary has going on that you can expect this semester. Uh, I also would like to introduce my partner over here, uh, Mr. Brian McCarthy. He is our president of the FAMU M for MM chapter. Uh, he also uh, is our coordinator and assists with our uh, safe access programs, has helped from really the beginning of the program uh, since its inception, making sure that, you know, we're getting people exactly what we what they need. And then we want to make sure that we also get onto the campuses. So um, Brian has been great. He 
probably is, is a part of the reason that you all are here tonight between him and his team getting the word out. Uh, so we appreciate y'all. Brian, you want to hop on, say a few words about what you have going on at FAMU and a little bit about yourself? Yeah, man, of course. Well, man, thank you for the intro. So everybody, my name is Brian McCarthy. Um, I'm actually a FAMU student myself. I'm a pharmacy student at FAMU. Uh, and really doing this medical marijuana thing is just something I love to do. And I love to educate people that look just like me around my age because it's a lot of benefits we can get from this. And it's a lot of things we don't know that we should. So I hope we have a really good time tonight, guys, and I hope to answer your questions. So appreciate you, Brian. Appreciate you. Uh, like we mentioned, we want to make sure that we get you all all the information you need. We do a lot just outside of medical marijuana as well, making sure whether you're interested in a career um, or trying to get prepared for potentially a career in, in the cannabis field, uh, whatever that might be in, uh, whether you just have interest in learning more about the health side of things. Uh, or even some of the law. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of different resources for you to take advantage of. As Tijana mentioned, shameless plug, I'm going to just remind you all, and maybe Tijana, we can drop this in the chat, but you definitely probably want to um, sign up for our freemium membership for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. You also get tapped into all the HBCU outreach stuff we have going on as well. So you get firsthand uh, kind of email updates about what we have going on really across the country uh, when we go different places. Brian, I think this summer we touched like what three four different campuses throughout the summer getting out and spreading the word so we definitely had a busy summer and are looking forward to uh, a great spring semester but before we get into all of that why everybody's here we're here to talk about medical marijuana here in the state of florida and what you need to do to get your car and be able to safely access uh this plant medicine uh for yourself so first things first we want to make sure we get a couple of frequently asked questions out of the way um, again, this program really is to help minorities not just have access to the plant, not just save money and, and get free food at the event, but also get the information, understand how you can move around, uh, how you can make sure that you are safely able to have this plant, keep yourself out of trouble, uh, understand how you can use it in the different ways, how it may relate to your anticipated career field, all these different things. We want to make sure you have that information. Uh, so one of the first things that people ask is about the qualifying conditions uh, for medical marijuana here in the state of Florida. And I want to kick it over to Brian to kind of give us a lay of the land about what those qualifying conditions are here. Brian? Yeah. So uh, with medical marijuana, the main question a lot of people have is what can I do to uh, to get it and, and am I qualified to get it am I able to get it um so the main thing is a lot of the times yes you are and um there's a lot of qualifying conditions from ADHD to anemia anxiety um any type of musculoskeletal pain uh even nausea severe headaches uh to more serious things like diabetes cancer um IBS, Parkinson's disease, anything under the sun you can really think of that kind of affects you in your day-to-day -day life, marijuana kind of helps and helps you treat and is also a qualifying condition for it. So when you come out today and talk with us, you'll be able to speak with our doctor um, when we have our, our clinic and you'll be able to see like that you have access to this and also the ones you know around can have access to this and need this. Absolutely. A great benefit of, of having your medical marijuana car, one, is being able to treat these different things, the conditions that are listed here, um, and then being able to understand how best to treat. You know, for everybody, every method is not going to work the same. So being able to come in and speak with the doctor about what would best work for you, what would improve the quality of your life is super important. Uh, another thing that that is a huge, huge benefit is making sure that you are legally uh, able to have access to this plant. Uh, obviously, being able to go to a dispensary, those are lab tested products, you know exactly what is in those products. Uh, so there's there's just a little bit more um, testing around that. And, and that's really important. But from a legality standpoint, being able to have your medical marijuana or having your medical marijuana card means that you're able to have medical marijuana on your person. Now, there are some things with that that you need to be mindful of, like making sure it's actually in a uh, packaging from a medical marijuana treatment center or MMTC, or for short, a dispensary for everybody who just knows the, the lingo. Um, being able to have whatever medicine you have in that packaging is super key. Um, you know, there's been instances where people have gotten pulled over by the police or instances where people have been asked, you know, is that, you know, legal? And they can pull out and show that they have 
from the medical marijuana treatment center, their name on the packaging, their, their uh, recommendation from the doctor and all the information uh, that would check you out to make sure that you're good and don't have any issues as far as that goes. Um, so that's, that's another great benefit. Uh, that kind of leads me into something else that's a, a frequently asked question, um, which is really about being able here in the state of Florida to have your concealed carry permit. So a lot of people are unsure whether or not you can have both your medical marijuana card and your concealed carry permit. The answer shortly to that question is yes, you can have both. <laughs> our uh, commissioner of ag or our outgoing commissioner of agriculture, uh, Commissioner Nikki Free, she has both and will gladly show you both <laughs> if you ever meet her. Um, she's very open about having both. Uh, so some of the nuances that just to be aware of um, the the legality in it and the wording in the language is that you can't, uh, they ask when you get your concealed carry permit, I believe it's question 14B, they ask you uh, if you use any illicit drugs. In the state of Florida, medical marijuana is looked at as medicine. So it's not an illicit drug. You can answer no to that question if you have a medical marijuana card, yet another benefit. And if anybody asks you, you actually have the recommendation from the doctor that says, yes, this person has medical marijuana as a benefit for X condition. So the answer to that question simply is yes, you can have both. Um, the question to look out for if you're ever like trying to do the application for a concealed carry permit, Again, double, my, somebody might want to double check me if you know in the chat, but I believe it's question 14B. It asks you directly, do you use any illicit drugs? The state of Florida, again, identifies medical marijuana as a plant medicine. So no, it's not an illicit drug. It's medicine that you actually have a medical marijuana card for. So if anybody ever asks, that is how that works with the with the gun license. Uh, if you have additional questions about that, please feel free to drop them in the chat. We'll make sure that when we circle back uh, at the end for Q and A, that we you know get to as many as of those questions as we can. Um, and then the next thing that I want to do uh, just to talk about an additional benefit um, with having your medical marijuana card, there are other states that you can go to. Um, this is totally off agenda. I literally just thought of this guy, so I'm sorry that I'm kind of going a little bit off script. But you can also go to other states and use your medical marijuana card. We are, you're able to go to the term is called reciprocity. You're able to go to other states that allow reciprocity, which simply means that your medical marijuana card works in their uh, dispensaries and their treatment centers. And in states where they actually have legal cannabis use, like adult use, like say Cal. Uh, California, Colorado, something like that, uh, you actually save on paying taxes because you are a medical patient. So you actually end up saving a little bit of money when you do go into the dispensaries in different states. And that's honestly most states that have either adult use or medical marijuana allow for reciprocity. Strangely enough, Florida does not. So you can't come from a different state and have a medical marijuana card in Florida and use your medical marijuana card. I want to say like Florida and Virginia are one of like two states that uh, have that that particular rule. But most states allow you to have your medical marijuana card from Florida or any other state and use it in their dispensaries and save a little money on the taxes as well. Um, so that's something else to be mindful of. Sorry, I slightly went off script. Um, so real quick, I'm going to take a pause there. We're going to kind of talk really quickly, just a, a walkthrough of what it's like to go to one of our safe access clinics so that everybody is aware of what to expect. Um, and then we're going to kind of talk about what each of our organizations have going on this semester so that you're aware of those things. And then we'll jump into Q&A. Tijana, how am I looking? Are we doing okay on time? Am I doing all right? Yeah, you're doing great. Okay, sweet. <laughs> um, Brian. Talk to Brian has just to give everybody a little bit of background. Brian has done, I don't know, maybe like eight safe access clinics at this point. He's done quite a few. Been involved yeah, in the probably planning. about eight. Yeah, been involved in the planning for, for a good majority of them. Um and, and has you know been very helpful. Um, I want to do two things. I want you to quickly kind of talk about on campus as a student what to expect as far as like campus policy with having a medical marijuana card. And then we'll get okay. into uh, kind of what a clinic looks like as far as walking through and what to expect. So can you kind of do those two things for me before we jump into what's going on this semester? Yeah, 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 cool. So uh, with 
on campus about having medical marijuana. So um, under like FAMB regulation, it says that uh, um, since marijuana is still a Schedule One illegal drug federally, and FAMU is a federally funded campus, it's still illegal to, um, to have it, um, to use it and have it out. But if you're a medical marijuana patient, you have a, a legal reason to have it. And as long as you have it on your person in the container, like DJ said, and you use it not on campus, but you use it on your own personal time away from campus, it's perfectly okay to have as long as you just keep it to yourself and don't let everybody know you got the good stuff. In, in in basic terms. So, you know, that is definitely something you want to make sure you understand being on campus. We're not encouraging anybody to go out and, you know, use medical marijuana on campus because you can still very much so get in trouble for that. Um, but being definitely. able to have it on your person, we know is definitely a question that gets asked across campuses. And as long as you have it on your person and you're a patient, it has your, your name on it and it's in the proper packaging and containers, then you're good to go to have it on your person. And like I said, for your medicine, honestly. Um, so exactly, it's medicine. Exactly, exactly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the clinics and what to expect as you walk through those. Yeah, so our clinics, honestly, our clinics are my most fun part about this whole experience. Um, just getting to meet new people and new faces and seeing how marijuana brings people together. Uh, so just I'm going off on our clinic, starting off, we um, you initially come and we'll have you fill out a, a intake form. So like when you go to the doctor's office and you sit down, and you got to wait in the waiting room, same type of deal. But instead, we don't have a waiting room. We'll have dispensary tables out so you can talk to different uh, dispensaries around the area. We'll also have food available too for our prospective patients as well. So, um, but you'll fill out your intake form and then you will also, uh, on your phone, we'll have it set up for you to be able to go on the Office of Medical Marijuana Use to start your initial application. So when you get to uh, see the doctor, you'll be able to uh, kind of streamline it and be able to do everything on your on your person. So um, you'll after you fill out your intake form, you'll wait a little bit, you'll talk with the doctor, you'll uh, let him know what's going on and he'll talk to you or she, uh, we have both. Um, and then after that, you'll uh, come, you'll come back uh, from seeing the doctor, you'll talk with some more of our dispensaries, we'll have great deals for you. Uh, every time I go, I know I always get hooked up, and they'll hook you guys up even more than they do me, and I work there, so uh, yeah. you guys will love it. Um, and then besides that, that's it, you'll get a free, you'll get free food, and I'm not talking like pizza or something, It'll, it, it's good food, and you know, my, my family fellow students, if it's free, it's me, we there. So come out, if you, yeah, if you, you a family student, I know you like block parties like I do. I think we're going to have something up. So come, come out to us, see us. We'll have our clinic on February the 11th, it's on Saturday, and it'll be from one to five. And then we'll make sure we give you all the location. It's link up tally, but we'll make sure we drop the address in the chat so that everybody has it. There's also a flyer that'll be dropped yep. shortly after this uh, after this call. So look out for that. We'll make sure we get that circulated to everybody. Please share it with your friends. We're trying to get as many people, uh, like I said, safely able to access this medicine and also understanding how to use it. I know for me, uh, the first time that I went and sat and talked with the dispensary partner that we had there and they explained all of the different products they had one, it was a little mind blowing because I was like, I, I had no idea what like live sugar was like, or even how to use it for that matter. So I was able to learn a lot of different things and different ways that I could medicate. And so that was incredibly helpful. Yes, the discounts. We love those and they they hook up they hook us up with discounts um that like they don't hook up for in the regular stores. So it's really a, a dope opportunity. Yeah. They set up your pickup order for you if you want to place an order on the spot so you can go over to their dispensary and pick it up that weekend. Um, and it's really dope. We had just to give you like food this past weekend, we were in Miami. We had, you know, like some curry chicken, some jerk chicken, little brown stew chicken. So we had some real Good food. I missed that event. No, so I, I like, should have came to Miami. Missed that event, so I'm kind of like, you should just skip Ooh. past that. Let's let's get to the I'm next topic because that, that ain't even we'll right. Get to the, oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're you're right. I just wanted people to know. Making you know what I'm hungry, saying? DJ, DJ, yeah. you making me hungry. <laughs> you got us starving now. My bad. My bad. Let's let's move on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So let's talk about what else we have going on this semester. Uh, Brian just mentioned. Um, February 11th, we'll be having our safe access clinic in Tallahassee. Definitely look out for that. You'll want to. Oh, earn location for. 
location oh, yeah. versus safe access clinic. Sorry to cut you off like that. Just real quick for um everybody who kind of knows the Tallahassee area. It's on Lake Bradford. It's um hmm, it's right it's right by Family Way. If you um like you're going towards FSU, like you're going towards the stadium. Um and yeah, it, it's right there, middle of both schools. Go ahead, DJ. Great location. It is between both schools, between FSU and FAM. So it's a really nice location. You won't be able to miss us because we'll be out there. We'll have the music going and everything like that. It'll be a nice vibe. So you want to come out, hang out, have fun with us. Um, like, like we said, that'll be February 11th from 1 to 5. You'll definitely want to RSVP. We'll drop that information with the flyer. Um, that guarantees you get seen by the doctor. We do accept walk-ups, um, but you know, when we have a lot of walk-ups and it's closer to the end of the day, sometimes we have to, you know, cut it off and make, you know, make some other arrangements for folks because we do want to get everybody seen by the doctor. But in order to make sure you get seen that day and are able to, you know, purchase your medicine and take advantage of the dope discounts and everything that day, we want to make sure that you RSVP so we can guarantee that you get seen. So we'll drop that, uh, that chat info as well. We'll not in this chat. We'll drop it with the flyer and then you guys are get an email as well that kind of gives you all that information um perfect thank you tajana I dropped it right in the chat um great michelle let's talk about what mary has going on this semester absolutely so what can i first um just say re reiterate again that family mary we have a legislative mandate so that's where we get our authority from in this in this space we travel all over the state of Florida, so we're not just in Tallahassee. Uh, we have lots of partners. We got iHeartRadio, we have Black newspapers in all of the, the different counties. And today I'm in Jacksonville, and if you saw me moving around a little bit, it's because I had to relocate because the cleaning people were downstairs in the bank that I'm in attending another event. So this is just one example of one of the events that we attend on an annual basis. It, basis, it is the Black Expo. But again, we're, we're all over the state of Florida and uh, we're engaging um, students, we're engaging the general public. And I've heard some really, really awesome stories about how medical marijuana has changed the lives of so many people, how they've been able to replace their pharmaceuticals with using medical marijuana, how they've been able to get away from the opioids and just uh, enjoy the medicine um, and get relief from their medical conditions. So let's talk about what's happening at, at FAMU. Well, first I wanna let you know that in the chat, I put in a link for our next virtual conversation on cannabis. Our virtual conversation on cannabis is one way that you can attend and learn about what Mary is doing and hear from experts in this field. So we bring the experts to you. We're going to come up with a topic uh, that we think uh, the public is interested in. Some of our frequently asked questions sometime result in a virtual conversation on cannabis. And we're going to bring that doctor, that medical doctor. Uh, sometimes we have law enforcement. Uh, sometimes we have brief counselors and psychologists, uh, all types of, of topics, because we want Florida to be informed. We definitely want our students to be informed because as uh, Brian reiterated, marijuana is still a schedule one drug. Um, and so that means that even though law enforcement has kind of relaxed uh, in terms of arresting individuals with small amounts of recreational marijuana, you can still be arrested with marijuana because it's still federally illegal. Even though it's legal in the state, I just want you to understand that the likelihood of you being arrested with, with recreational, it depends on how much you have on your possession. And it depends on if you are impaired, if you're driving, I would encourage what you whether it's medical marijuana or recreational marijuana, if you drive impaired, you know, you're gonna give the police some probable cause. You can't drive impaired with any medicine. So I just wanna make sure you, you understand that. That's just a little nugget for you. But we are planning to have another 420 We Day uh, orientation. If you missed it last year, we had Black Enterprise Magazine on FAMU's campus 
and we brought in so many different individuals from around the state of Florida. It was a, it was a, it was a good program, and we're looking for an even larger turnout. So 420 is on a Thursday. Now, many students are uh, busy studying for exams, final exams, but I have worked with instructors across campus, and some of those instructors provided extra credit for students who attended that We Day celebration. So uh, it's an opportunity, again, to learn more about what's happening with medical marijuana in Florida. What are the do's? What are the don'ts? And for you to engage with some of these experts and industry leaders. Brian was one of our speakers last year, and I met DJ because he was one of our vendors. Not only are we going to talk about education, we're going to talk about job opportunities. I know you're interested in how can you get into the field. We had one student as a result of that weekday receive a job offer. Agribusiness. So it's going to be worthwhile for you to come out. Um, we'll put it in the FAMU info when we get the flyer together. Um, you can register. And if you have questions, just feel free to call me. I answer all types of questions all day long. We create that safe space, no judgment zone. Trust me, I've heard it all. I heard about what's happening in the dorm. <laughs> Some students, they actually tell me that because it's a no judgment zone. And we want to take every opportunity we can to, to educate you and make sure you have the right information. And lastly, I will just encourage you, encourage you, take opportunity to talk to the physicians about what your situation is. There are qualifying conditions that are listed in the law, but that doesn't mean that that list contains all of the medical conditions that medical marijuana may treat. It's just a short list. So it's worth talking to the doctor if you have insomnia, if you have anxiety, because when I talk to students, most of them talk to me about they already know about gummies and insomnia and, and anxiety. And so that's it. I don't want to take up too much of the time. I'm looking at 7.30, but um, that's pretty much it. Sorry, I was on mute. No, that was awesome. Thank you so much. That was that was a wealth of information. Uh, really, really good stuff. Personally, looking forward to seeing you in person again for the 420 event on, the, on that Thursday. So it's going to be a great time. Uh, looking forward to connecting with some of y'all in the chat as well. Um, and then, Brian, do you want to cover anything else outside of our clinic coming up on the 11th? And then I'll get into some of our national HBCU stuff that we have going on. Um, no, that's pretty much it for me right now going on for uh, in front of M for uh, FAMU spring. Uh, we depending on this event on how big our turnout is, we're, we're, we're expecting to be pretty good. We're going to have a follow up event probably next fall um, to have everybody come out again. Awesome. And it'll be really important because coming back out, we usually try to come to the same city every about seven or so months, because in the state of Florida, you have to see a doctor every seven months ish. The number is uh, to make sure that you kind of re up your recommendation from the doctor so that you can continue to go to the medical marijuana dispensaries and get your medication. So we try to come back um, before that kind of expiration date so that you can see that doctor again. Um, and, and not have to pay pay that fee. Um, one thing else that I wanted to mention, uh, we were talking about jobs and Michelle mentioned um, making sure that, you know, we have those resources for you all. From a national HBCU standpoint, a couple of things that we're doing, uh, we're partnering, uh, we're continuing our partnership with uh, SMART and SSDP, which is the Students for Sensible Drug Policy and Student MMJ, to do an HBCU Industry Accelerator uh, this semester. So our uh, first cohort, we had 11 students from 10 different uh, HBCUs across the country. We do have a student, at, an ambassador at FAMU. Um, DeAndre Smith might be in the chat somewhere, um, but he is our uh, FAMU ambassador. He's done some great stuff with Mary, with uh, M for MM as well. Um, and then uh, uh, with that program, we make sure that you have the training to be able to come onto your campus, um, speak, 
uh, intelligently and confidently to some of the things going on in the medical marijuana space, whether it's policy, whether it's education, whether it's, um, you know, medically speaking, we give you, or just a plant in general, different ways that you can use the plant. Um, we give you those tools and those resources within that industry accelerator. You also get a great opportunity to network uh, with folks who are, you know, in director positions and, and high level executive positions at large companies across the country uh, and being able to, you know, tap in with them um, and be able to lean on them as a resource as well. Um, additionally, we do have our own uh, job pipeline with um, with Infra MM that we we are creating and are partnering with um, with Smart On as well. So you all can definitely uh, look out for that. Again, we'll send you that in an email, and I'm sure uh, Brian and the rest of the team at FAMU will be talking about it as it gets closer. Uh, with that, we'll be oh, having, for sure for sure. Yeah, we'll be having a free virtual career fair towards the end of the semester, so that if anybody's looking for like a summer uh, opportunity potentially just to see what it's like to work in the space um, that we can get you situated and prepared and connected with folks for that too uh, so definitely stay on the lookout like I said we want to make sure that you all have as much information as we can get you uh, and are able to do as much as you seek to do within the space um, and, and be supported in that uh, because we want to have you know as many of us who are in the space and who have been negatively impacted by, you know, the war on drugs to be able to now benefit from, you know, legal cannabis use, whether it be medically or adult use. Um, so I'm going to stop there. Tijana, from a Florida standpoint, anything we want to kind of point out, we do these safe access clinics, by the way, across the state. So if you have like family in other parts of the state, definitely connect with m for mm um, so that you can stay on top of that calendar. We go to a different city every month. Um, so we'll be going to Tallahassee in February. We'll be going to Orlando at the end of February. We got Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, Tampa, Orlando, all on the on the Jacksonville, all on the map. So definitely stay on the lookout for that. And if you're interested in volunteering for one of these events, definitely get with Brian uh, and our team at FAMU so that you can, you know, get involved. Even if you don't go to FAMU, definitely connect with Brian. Um, obviously, within the Tallahassee area, he can make sure that you have those resources as well. Um, sorry, I kind of <laughs> kept going. After no, I that's okay. To you, Tijana. I want to hit a few recaps before we stop the recording um, in order to do the Q&A. So again, we wanted to make sure that people felt very comfortable um, to be able to ask any questions. There is a wealth of knowledge here on this panel. Um, Brian is great and can definitely speak from a student perspective as well as being on the activism side. And then um, Michelle has just a wealth of knowledge in general because she's doing outreach and community education. She knows so much about um, the permissible things to do in the state of Florida. So I wanna just clarify a couple of things. I don't know if we explicitly stated what the Safe Access Card Clinic is, but um, it is an opportunity in which uh, m for mm partners with other sponsors to provide a free medical marijuana card to um, attendees of the Safe Access Clinic. So we cover your doctor fee, um, either in partnership with the doctor or in partnership with one of our corporate sponsors. Um, but there is a, still a state fee that you have to pay um, directly to the state. That fee we cannot cover. But what we do try and do is make sure is that it's kind of offset by the various discounts that you'll get um, and you'll be able to save money in, in other ways. And that's why we partner with, um, with corporate partners in order to be able to provide that for you. Um, I also wanted to just shout out some additional resources that I know that they have over at Family Mary. Um, Michelle put some things in the chat, but I know they have a podcast. She was telling me about some of the health and wellness topics that they cover. Um, I think you even mentioned to me one time, um, it was something about pregnancy and cannabis. So they just cover a variety of things, of uses, of educational resources. And then obviously it's important for you to have her contact information and the information over at Mary in case you have any additional questions. So Brian is also a great resource, um, but they have an actual office with staff. They are there um, to be able to help navigate this process and to be able to educate the community. The biggest thing I can say is... Um, this is really an opportunity for all ways in which, you know, all of us have come together with the same cause of making sure that Black and Brown people have access to the plant as a patient, to the education. We want you to be in the know. 
Um, and we want people to stop being locked up for cannabis. Simple as that. And so we want to make sure that you're operating in the guidelines that have been implemented by the state. And if there's any way that we can help you to be able to use the plant in a better way, we want to make sure that you have those resources available to you. Um, Brittany Clark put some great information in the chat. Shout out to Brittany. Um, she just started working with, look at DJ, he got work for you, Brittany. <laughs> Brittany um, has experience with working in compliance and I just love her and her spirit and just wanting to make sure people are informed about the compliance side of this because um, that's just a whole nother thing when it comes to business and operations. Um, but the dispensaries have to operate in a very compliant manner. And so she has a lot of information. So she put some additional information in the chat about um, the concealed weapons um, permit information that we were talking about that topic earlier. Okay, so anything else anyone else wants to say before I stop hitting record and then we start covering that Q&A? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. All right, we're going to end the recording now.